Hi, my name is Stephanie Shelnut, and this is my capstone video presentation on how to troubleshoot common software issues. I am currently enrolled in the Specialist of Instructional Technology degree program at Kennesaw State University, and I currently teach 7th grade language arts at Austin Middle School in Paulding County School District. The name of my project is Troubleshooting Common Software Issues. The need that I saw is that teachers often spend a lot of time troubleshooting how to use technology. I wanted to create some helpful tools to help the teachers at my school to get the most out of their technology. The plan for my project was to create a survey to identify technology learning needs. I wanted to create tools such as handouts and videos to meet these technology learning needs. And then I had to have a website to host the tools and then I had to post the tools to the website and organize in a helpful manner. And then I shared the link to the website with my peers and explained the purpose. While I did not get to evaluate the effectiveness of my project, if I were to evaluate the project, I would send out a second survey to see what teachers thought of the project. I would also conduct interviews with teachers to get one-on-one -on -one feedback since this would get me the most candid feedback from teachers. The project went mostly as planned, with a survey created early on in the process. I knew that I wanted to focus on technology available at work, since there are many tips and tricks that I have learned over the years that many other teachers could benefit from learning. The main technology that I wanted to focus on was Infinite Campus, which is our online gradebook, Canvas, which is an online learning management system, Google Drive, since this is a valuable tool that many teachers can use to allow students to collaborate together. OneDrive, as this is the official software that we're using for email and document storage, and several other tips and tricks that I have learned over the years of different types of technology. When I created the survey, I kept it brief, since at that point in time, teachers had been asked to fill out many different surveys from the district and for the school, and I didn't want to overwhelm them with another survey. And I also let them know in the email that I sent them that it would be brief, so I'd have more teachers responding. When I analyzed the survey data, I was surprised to find that videos was not the highest on the list for resource formats that they preferred. However, the more I thought about it, the more I realized it makes sense because videos can be a little time consuming and they might want to speed through to get to what they want to hear. And I can see why they prefer handouts because then they could print them out and flip through it and get to what step they need. But unfortunately, there were several resources where there was too many steps to try to make handouts. It would have been, you know, 50 pages or it would have taken me a long, long time to put all the steps on paper with the arrows and highlighting of where I wanted them to go. So I felt like there was some resources that I just had to make videos of to make it clear and so I could comment and quickly show what I wanted them to do. Once the survey data was collected, I analyzed it to see if my idea of what teachers wanted to learn was consistent with what other teachers wanted to learn. I determined that the best way to publish my work would be to create a Weebly page since I could easily share the link without teachers needing to log into a website. As I began planning out the organization of the website, I struggled to decide on how I wanted to organize the tools. I was unsure if I should organize it on separate pages according to which software the tools related to or if I should have it all on one page organized in a table. Eventually, I decided to organize it into separate pages by the software the tool related to. Once the organization was decided, I began creating and uploading tools to the website. When I began creating tools, I quickly realized that I would need to be very careful to redact any student information that was collected through screenshots. Unfortunately, I had no way of taking screenshots of the software without taking images of students' names and identifying information. To combat this, I used white blocks of color to cover up any identifying information in handouts. I then saved my work as PDFs to prevent someone from being able to download the file and manipulating the white blocks of color to see what was underneath. For videos, I also had to use white blocks of color to redact student information, but once I saved the videos, I no longer had to worry about someone being able to manipulate the blocks of color. Once the website was finished, I shared the link with my coworkers through the school email. 
I explained the purpose and shared that there were some tools on there that would be very pertinent to them as the tools help with the beginning of the year technology needs. Many teachers verbally told me that they found the website very helpful, and one video in particular was very helpful. This video was the how to cross post sections of classes on Canvas, and this was something that many teachers struggled with at the beginning of the year since the process is not very user friendly on Canvas. And I'm glad that this tool did help a lot of teachers not have that frustration at the beginning of the year. Overall, the experience was very valuable in my understanding of how to develop and implement professional learning tools to help my fellow teachers. Having to share my tools and work with my coworkers and administrators made me step out of my comfort zone since I have not shared my work to this extent and with this many people all at once before. This made me have to think very carefully about what I wanted to say and how I wanted to present all of the information. This project also made me have to think about how to get the most buy-in from my teachers since I was asking them to take the time to look at my work and hope that it would benefit them in some way. Coming up with the idea and the survey was not difficult. The hard part came about when I had to start creating the handouts and videos. While this was not inherently difficult, I struggled with getting them completed in a timely manner since they were time consuming and I had some unexpected issues come up at work, which took a lot of my time. I wound up having to delay the publishing of my website until the next semester, which totally threw off my schedule. However, it worked out in the end since it allowed me to take advantage of the fact that many teachers would be more likely to use my tools since there was a certain piece of technology that always gave teachers problems. And as I said before, that was the Canvas cross-posting video. One thing that I did not anticipate when I began creating the resources was the fact that I would not have access to student names over the summer. And so that made it difficult to create videos such as the cross-posting video for Canvas since I had no classes to cross-post over the summer. So that made me have to wait until the beginning of the school year to create that video. However, that did help me because I used that video as a way to get teacher buy-in since many teachers did struggle with the cross-posting on Canvas. That was the video that I got the most positive feedback on since that was something that many teachers had struggled with over the years. Overall, this was a very valuable experience for me, and I'm glad that I stepped outside of my comfort zone to create this and share it with my coworkers. When I got the website completed with all of the resources uploaded and organized, I finally typed up the email to send to my coworkers. When I did this, I realized how nervous I really was to share my work because I had never had to share my work to this extent before. I was very surprised as to just how nervous I was, and in fact, I had to sit there for about five minutes before I could work up the nerve to send the email. After I sent the email, I went and spoke with some other teachers to talk about my work, and after speaking with them and getting some positive feedback, I did feel better about sending it. But this exercise taught me just how nerve-wracking it can be to share your work because it's opening yourself up for ridicule and critiquing. But now that I've done it, I would definitely do this again, and it makes me more comfortable to do this in the future. After I heard all of the positive feedback from the teachers who I helped through my resources, it made me realize just how much I enjoyed being able to make the resources, even though it was a lot of time and a lot of stress. And it made me look forward to the future of being able to help more teachers in the future in the position of being a technology coach.